Welcome. This is my monthly summary of the status of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is for September of 2020. The news is generally not good. The numbers are still rising globally. We don't yet have any medications that can effectively treat the disease. And although there are some promising signs as far as vaccines are concerned, but the question is how soon will such vaccines be generally available? As I was making this video, the news came over the TV that Trump has been diagnosed with COVID-19. The irony here is palpable, seeing as just a couple days ago he was mocking Biden for wearing a mask. He, along with Johnson and Bolsonaro, have been the three leaders that mocked the COVID-19 as a hoax or not worth bothering about or just a mild version of the flu. And all three of them have come down with it. But I guess the question I've come up with now is, what hope is there for the rest of us if the most protected man on the planet catches it? We can't take those sorts of procedures. We don't get daily tests of COVID-19. We don't get all the people visiting us tested for COVID-19. Here are some of the basic statistics. Uh, globally, there are about 34 million cases recorded. Of those, there have been about a million deaths. That gives us a fatality rate of about 3.4%. That's about 30 times more fatal than the common flu. Let's take a look at the worst affected countries. First of all, we'll take a look at the most cases. The USA leads the way with 7.3 million. Just behind them is India with 6.3 million. Brazil has 4.8 million. Then there's a large gap to Russia at 1.2 million. Colombia at 830,000. Peru at 815,000 and Spain at 779,000. Most fatalities has a similar picture with the USA leading the way at 210,000. That's a fatality rate of about 3%. Brazil has a similar fatality rate with 144,000 deaths. India at 99,000 deaths is a much lower rate at 1.5%. Uh, Mexico has got a very high rate of 10% as does the UK and Italy and Peru at 32,000 as a 4% uh, fatality rate. Now compare this with New Zealand which has only had 1500 cases total and only 25 deaths and that's a, a death rate of 1.5%. This is a plot of the number of cases as a function of time worldwide. You can see we're well over 30 million at the moment the problem here is that this curve is not flattening out at all. And I think that means that although some countries have flattened their curve, when they do that, other countries that have not been so affected start to take off again. So we're just still getting effectively the first wave of this virus going through the planet. And it's likely to get worse. Until we can turn this curve over, then uh, there is no real respite from this uh, virus. This is the same chart as I showed before, but now broken down by continent. And I think you can see what I mean by some countries are beginning to turn their curves down. There's at least three here that are doing that. Meanwhile, four other continents are do increasing their uh, count rate significantly. When you put all this together, you get this continual rise. And so this is why I think there's cross infection from one place to another. There are no drugs yet to prevent or treat COVID-19. According to the World Health Organization, there are no medicines that can prevent or treat COVID-19. That's a statement they just put out. The FDA is stating that there are 590 drugs that are being tested at the moment for its effectiveness against COVID-19. 310 trials have already been reviewed by the FDA. Five treatments are authorized currently for emergency use only, for example, remdesivir. But so far, there are zero treatments approved by the FDA for the use in COVID-19 patients. What's the story with vaccines? Well, it's not much better. There are 49 different vaccines undergoing study at the moment. Nine are in phase three. That's where thousands of volunteers 
are given the drug to test whether their effect is over a range of ages and health. 12 are in phase 2, as where fewer than 100 patients are given test doses to see if they are effective against the disease at all. 11 are in phase 1, that's where a few healthy volunteers are used to test the drug to see whether it is safe and induces immune response. And 17 are in preclinical trials. And so far, none of these have been approved. The problem, of course, comes is when you get the drug, how do you distribute it to hundreds of millions of people or billions of people? That is as yet unknown. There are only six known ways of stopping the spread of COVID-19. Wear a mask. Stay socially distanced. Learn not to touch your face, which is really the hardest of all of them. Wash your hands whenever you touch an object that is may be infected. Avoid crowds and take no unnecessary travel. Very disturbing information has been going forward that there are long term effects from catching COVID-19. There can be heart and lung damage. Uh, you, there's long term fatigue, shortness of breath, headaches and joint pain. So the cost of this disease may not be just limited to actually treating the disease as it is now, but these long term effects may affect the health of large portions of the population. A lot of people have been talking about the possibility of a second wave, and it seems some places are already getting hit by it. Spain, Poland, the Czech Republic, France and Holland have all got fairly large increases in the number of cases. The UK is reporting certain areas are increasing rapidly. And 25 US states are on the rise again. There are reports that the virus is mutating to be a more infectious virus but less fatal and that's sort of a good news bad news type of situation. We can conclude a number of things from this that we're not out of the woods yet. This is no time to relax your precautions and try to return to normal. What we considered normal at this time last year may not return for a very very long time if ever. The most important thing in the interim is to remain safe. 